Welcome back everyone to Campfire Tales. Tonight, we are revealing a horrifying secret that a park ranger has shared with us. Something that many of you may not quite understand. Some of you may even not want to understand. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss tonight's story. If you like true and creepypasta scary stories, make sure to subscribe, click on that bell, and smash that thumbs up. Now let's get spooky. The park ranger wants to remain anonymous, so we're just going to call him Alpha. Alpha has been a park ranger for nearly seven years. Currently, he still works at this location, which is why he wants his name not to be disclosed. Alpha currently resides in northern Colorado and works at the Rocky Mountain National Park. This has been the only location he has ever worked for when it comes to the Forest Service. The National Park spans the Continental Divide and encompasses, protects mountains, forests, and alpha tundras. It's known for the Trail Ridge Road and the Old Fall River Road, which drives past the aspen trees and beautiful rivers. And you can't forget the Keyhole Route, a climb crossing vertical rock faces, leads up Logs Peak, and the park's tallest mountain. But there is a darker side to the Rocky Mountain National Park. Alpha loves his job being a park ranger, and the fact that he is coming forward with this only is proof of his love and desire of the wild. But he believes that the truth needs to be told, regardless of the fact what may or may not happen. Alpha is originally from Northern California, and is used to the four seasons and harsh winters and dense forests. Alpha had relocated his family to Colorado back in 2016 when they had offered him the position as a park ranger. Everything was smooth for the first two or three years. There was nothing out of the ordinary that wasn't already explained to or stories from the past from other colleagues within the workforce that he worked with. On that fourth year, that's when he experienced something that no other park ranger had ever told him before. Something that he has never forgotten to this very day. This was inevitable. They've always joked around about Alpha, about paranormal things, to cryptid beasts in the woods and the mountains. Of course, he was always a skeptic. Alpha never believed in any of this mumbo jumbo type of crap. He was a very straight shooter. Being an ex-military person himself, he tends to believe if he doesn't see it, it doesn't exist, period, point blank. He did see something. And that's when his whole view of his career had shifted. He was working an evening shift, something that the new guys always kind of had to do, which he didn't have to do after a couple of years being already at the location but he was actually filling in for somebody else's schedule while they were on vacation. It was in the middle of his route. There was only a few people that were on duty at the time. Alpha was driving along a dirt path. I will not specify any of the names written down just for privacy reasons, as Alpha still currently works there. It was around 11.30 p.m. The windows were down, the radio was off, the weather was nice outside. It was late October, and he couldn't have asked for a better weather. Sure, it was pretty chilly, but that's the way that he always liked it. Now, Alpha was a smoker. I know a lot of people look down on people that smoke, but he had been a smoker long before he became a park ranger, and that's just one thing that he could never truly give up. Now, he's not supposed to smoke on duty, but it was 11.30 at night, he was alone in his Jeep, and he figured, what the hell, who's gonna tell? While he was driving on this road that late evening, he lit up his cigarette, 
For one quick moment, he took his eyes off of the road as he had his hand cupped around the lighter due to the wind of the windows still being open, trying to light his cigarette in his mouth. When he heard a loud snapping sound from somewhere close by the truck, and when he looked up straight ahead, that's when he saw this large thing run across the dirt road mere inches from the front of his truck, disappearing without a trace completely out of sight. It freaked him out so much, knowing that he was about to hit some wild animal on the road, that he steered off of the dirt road and ended up hitting the corner of his bumper into a nearby tree. Of course, he did not hit the tree super hard. The airbags didn't go off on him or anything like that, but there was going to be some damage to the bumper. Alpha obviously was truly panicked. He stepped out of his vehicle, grabbing his flashlight and his walkie-talkie leaving the keys in the ignition, but turning the truck off. That way the lights would stay on so he could see a little bit of his surroundings, as it was completely pitch black outside. Once he was outside, he first walked around to the front of the bumper to see how bad the damage truly was. The bumper had smashed into a nearby tree, which definitely was going to leave a mark and questions were going to be asked. But thankfully, he could just say that something ran in front of his car and he steered off trying to avoid collision. He'd leave the cigarette part out, of course. After taking a few breaths, Alpha looked around his surroundings. He wasn't able to make out any of the track marks as his truck pretty much screwed that all up. He radioed into the station to see if anybody was nearby. Unfortunately, he was the only one in that specific area at the moment. So he let them know his exact location to the best of his ability, and that he had collided into a tree out of dodging a wild animal running across the road. He explained to them that the damage wasn't crazy and that he could make it back to the station A-OK, -okay. but he wanted to investigate what the hell he had saw that ran in front of him. Nowhere in this story did anyone warn him that, hey, you should just stay put and wait for backup, or B, don't worry about it, it was probably just a deer, come back to the station. None of that ever happened for Alpha. They just said 10-4 and that was that. Even if they told him not to, Alpha pretty much probably would have went to investigate anyways, because that was who he was. So, turning his flashlight on, he made his left turn and wandered off into the forest. Only after a couple of minutes of walking, he saw the split in the foliage, noticing that something large had went through here and recent. This path was from whatever it was that had just ran in front of his truck. He was on the right path. He continued on, hiking onwards. Several minutes had gone by, and nothing, not a trace, not a peep, not a cricket could be heard. The only sound he could hear is the snapping of twigs and leaves beneath his boots. A few more minutes had passed, and that's when he started hearing this weird guttural sound. A prime example of how this guttural sound sounded like was somewhat of a canine type low deep growl. What kind of breed it sounded like truly cannot specify. He stopped in his tracks, shone his flashlight in all directions around him, as the guttural sound seemed to be echoing through the trees in all directions. The guttural sound only happened two times before he stopped in his tracks and started looking around with his flashlight. When he stopped in his tracks, everything was completely silent. Moments had passed which felt like an eternity. Finally, he caught a glimpse of something to his far left. At first, he shone his flashlight right past it, missing it entirely. But on his swipe back, that's when he caught it. They locked eyes. He locked eyes with some kind of beast. Something that he had never seen or heard of before. What he was looking at was much larger than he was, he could tell, even though it was at least 35 feet away behind some trees and brush. He could only see part of the silhouette of this creature as it was hiding itself, camouflaged in the pitch blackness. 
The thing had glowing eyes. Eyes that were crimson in color. The darkest of red yet still shined in the flashlight's aura. It just stared at him, non-blinking, never taking its eyes off of him. And he did the same. Alpha was terrified. He didn't know what to do. He had his weapon on him, but he did not even know what he was even looking at. Nor should he even use this weapon on this creature. Just because you didn't know what it was doesn't mean you should point a gun at it and shoot it. It doesn't work like that in the forestry. You can't just shoot something because you get spooked. After a few moments of locking eyes with each other, he could notice that this thing had somewhat of a canine-looking face. Almost like a giant dog with man-like features with long pointy ears. If you had to take a guess, it was a man with a dog's head. Being 35, 40 feet away from this thing, in the pitch black, with only a flashlight shoning in its direction, it was hard to make out many of its features, as it was all hidden in the dark. But he could tell that the face was definitely canine, yet it was on its back hind legs like a man. Now, in the back of his head, he was thinking maybe it was someone with a mask on trying to spook him. Was it one of his ranger buddies just pulling a prank on him? Or was it a feral human out there hunting for fresh prey, like they do over in the mountains of East Tennessee? Who knows? All he knew is that this beast was looking straight at him dead in his eyes, and he stared right back. So the stare down continued, which felt like forever, but really it was probably only a mere of a few seconds. He knew if he was going to hightail it and run out back to his truck, that it was very likely that this creature would chase him, as most predators do, knowing that the other had been in defeat. It's just animal instinct. You stand your ground, do what you gotta do, scream, beat your chest, blow a whistle, bark, whatever you gotta do. There's different methods for different type of animals that work to get predators away. Hopefully. What he did instead was he slowly started to backstep in the direction from where he came. He wasn't going to hightail and run away, because then it would give his accessor the acknowledgement that he was now prey, and he would probably lose his life. He slowly backpedaled, never taking his eyes off the silhouette of this blackish furry beast, this bear, dog, humanoid figure that was staring at him 35 feet in front of him. He had goosebumps all over his body. His hairs were standing on end on the back of his neck. He had no idea what the hell he was actually looking at. If it was during the day, he would have gotten a better view of this creature, even if it was far away, hiding behind trees and bushes. But for the most part, that's exactly how it looked to him. After a few minutes of backpedaling in the direction from where he came, in the direction back to his truck, of course, the beast slowly disappeared from view. The creature, which was watching him from the trees, had simply vanished, and the eyes were no longer visible through his flashlight. Still, his guard was completely up, knowing that at any moment, this creature could circle around him in any direction and attack like a velociraptor. He continued to walk. Eventually, knowing that the coast was clear in that direction, he slowly turned around and started walking in the direction of his truck correctly. He kept his guard up 100% as he walked, not speaking to himself, not even using the radio. He wanted complete silence around him to listen for any movement around him. Luckily, there wasn't any. About five minutes later, he finally reaches back to the truck and the dirt road. The lights were still on on the headlights, so it was easy for him to find through the brush before he even broke through the tree line. But he knew he was not out of the clearing yet. He still had to get to the truck, turn the truck on, back it up, turn the truck around, and hightail it out of there back to the ranger station, and then you're probably safe. Until those things happened, he knew he was still in a very dangerous situation. He kept his guard up, 
finally breaking the tree line, stepping foot onto the dirt road, and getting inside of his truck and turning on the ignition switch. Luckily, the truck started right up even with the damage that had been done to the front bumper. He put the truck and circled it in reverse, put the gear into drive, and drove off down the road. Within mere seconds of driving, he thought he caught those eyes one last time, but he wasn't too sure though. His guard was still completely up, even while he was inside the truck, looking in all directions all around him through the windows, making sure that nothing was going to pop out of nowhere like it once had. He does say that he did see those red glowing eyes as he drove by, watching him from the tree line. After a few minutes had gone by, he eventually made it back to the ranger station and explained his situation to his superior. He listened to him intently, not ever interrupting him whatsoever. When he finished everything and explained the damage to the truck, his superior did not seem to be interested in the damage of the truck whatsoever. He seemed to be more interested in his encounter more than anything, which totally surprised him. Usually when someone tells you a feeble tale, and there's damage involved, the damage is the priority, and then we'll talk about the fib later. But his superior wanted to know more about his encounter. Did he believe him? He couldn't tell at first, but once they both stepped foot outside, he showed the damage to his superior of his front bumper as they both shared some cigarettes on the front porch of the station. Nonchalantly, in the middle of a conversation, his superior interrupts him and speaks to him in a low tone never looking at him straight in the eyes, but looking out into the wilderness behind his vehicle as he spoke to him on the porch. He told him that he has encountered something like that, but it's been quite a few years. That what he had encountered was a predatory humanoid dogman creature. That this creature had been lurking in these mountains long before even he was a ranger himself. No one has ever encountered this creature head-on and lived to tell the tale. Only seen things from distances, heard noises, and animal mutilations found days later. There have been missing person reports in the area, as well as missing park rangers sporadically throughout the years. None have been linked to the dogman, per se, because there's no evidence that it even exists. But the rangers who have been working here for multiple years know the truth. They know that the dogman is real and it lurks in their mountains. Whether or not they hunt humans is always questionable. It could always be presumed to be the wrong place at the wrong time, being somewhere where you shouldn't have been, period. Animal mutilations have been from anywhere from campers' dogs who had gone missing, only to find them mutilated somewhere off miles away to mutilated deer, mooses, and other various animals. People like to blame bobcats or mountain lions or bears. But the rangers know better. They know what truly lurks out there in the dark. And yes, there is other wildlife and predators out there, but none are like the dog man. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the scary story tonight. And by all means, feel free to go to Colorado and do a little camping. I'm not saying not to be there. I'm just saying be on your guard if you're going to go to Colorado. Myself, I'm good. <laughs> There's enough cryptids out here in Tennessee for me to worry about as is. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And again, like always, spread me like butter. Yeah. Have a good night and stay spooky.